What's the good word? What's the good word? What up? What up? What up? What up? What's up? Yo, what's going on? What's going on? What up, Brian? What's going on? Yo, what's the good word? What's the good word? What's up, Nicole? What up? What up, Canada? Oh, 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 gotta turn this off. I always forget to turn the freaking notifications off. What's going on? What's going on? What up, Jake? What's up? What's good? What's good? What's up, Megan? How you doing? What's going on? What's up, Angela? How you doing? Casanova, what's good? What's up, Chrissy? Aunt Cam, what's going on? What's the good word? What's the good word? What's up? What's up? Welcome, welcome. What up, Texas? What's up, Book of Faces? How's it going? What's going on? People are like, yo, I'm, yo, what up? Ian Smith Fitness is in the room. Uh-oh. Pressure's on. Pressure's on to show up. Roberto Sassalado better step it up. We got celebs in the room here. Holy shit. Yo, what's the good word? Glad to be here. Glad to be here, fam. Uh, just a little, just a little bit of a, just a little bit of a heads up. Um, not, don't, I don't mean to bring the, I don't mean to bring the energy level down, beanbags, but I, I'm gonna be a little bit of a low energy jeb tonight. Gonna be a little bit of a low energy jeb. So if you're, if you're, if you're setting up to get, to get fully zapped right in the, right in the beanbag, you might want to tune out, kids, because. Your boy Sassalado is operating at about a fifty, at a, operating at about a fifty percent, maybe a seventy-five. Let's let's be honest. I got I got my banana here. I'm here to I'm, I'm here to rebuild. It's low energy Jeb. This is low energy Jeb Sassalado. I was a little bit under the weds yesterday. I'll be a little. I'm gonna be honest with you, beanbags. A little bit under the weds. A little bit under the weds. I was uh I was feeling the. I got I had the I had the Corona clap. I don't know. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I don't know. No, I had a little bit of a fieve, had a fieve, had to take a, had to, had, to, had to literally take naps. You can probably hear it in the voice there, beanbags. I just, it was low energy. So just get ready for a little bit of a low energy jab. So just nobody come at me and be like, this guy's not yelling. He hasn't headbutted his phone yet. It's a little bright in here. Maybe I'll turn the lights down. I'm heating up. I'm heating up. I'm sweating already. Holy crap. Oh. Let's get a little bit more. Uh, let's cool it off a little bit more. I mean, I'm here with my banana. Just, just trying to rebuild. Just trying to reset. <clears throat> Pardon. Low energy jab. Low energy Sassalado. All right. <laughs> People are like, yeah, the Corona clap. No. No, I'm, I'm probably fine. I really don't think I did, but whatever. Anywho, I digress. I got the banana. I got three drinks. I got the protein water. I got the water. I got the bubble water. Everything's everything's great. I'm just saying, just gear up for a low energy jab. That's all I'm saying. All right. <laughs> Anyhow, any whom. First of all, ahem, ahem. let me just. Okay. Look, <laughs> yo, eh, eh, like. <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot of beanbaggery going on in the going on in the world today, corn pops, and I just I just want to remind everybody of a couple of a couple of things as as we just as we navigate this un, uncertain beanbag future here, okay? <clears throat> low energy Sassalado. tone it down, don't come at me, don't at me, low energy Sassalado. Okay, I just want everybody to remember the following, like <clears throat> when you. When you say things and when you push things and when you say things that you don't know for sure, I just want people to remember that words matter, right? And people are paying attention. And though it may be easy for people like me to be like, I'm just a Sassalado. I'm just like some Gibran James, like at his house, just yelling into his phone. I bought a tripod now. Look at me. I bought $20 on Amazon. I'm a big deal now. Big deal. Turn it up. Crank it up. He's famous. Okay. Just want you to know that people are listening, right? So when 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 us beanbags, whether you have four followers, no followers, one follower, you got a friend, you got three friends, you got forty friends, I just want you to remember the. I want you to remember the telephone game that we all played in middle school, beanbags. And maybe you didn't play it, but maybe you did. And here's how the telephone game goes: you got a circle, you got a circle of folks, you got a circle of about 20, 20 jabrons, maybe twenty five jabrons in a circle. One, they have one sentence to say, and they go. You know, Billy tickled my beanbag under the, you know, under the slide and it goes passes around by the time it gets to the other side It's like Billy's wearing slides and he's eating beans and corn for for dinner And it's like what are you even talking about? It's not even the same thing, right? So I just want people to remember that words matter 
Words matter in your social circles, words matter to your friends, words matter to your family, words matter in a single conversation. And especially words matter when you save them to the interwebs and you propel them out, out into the, into the stratosphere there, Corn Pop, okay? So if we could all just be a little bit more cognizant of when we fucking say things that, that, it, uh, that it goes places, beanbags, okay? Yeah, I'm sweating already out here. I'm, I'm, I'm heating up. Low energy Jeb is fucking. I'm already off the. I'm already off the fucking rails here, Jack. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon. Back to the lab again. All right. So I just want everybody to remember that your words matter, right? So when you say things to your friends, when you say things to other people, and especially when you say things and record them on camera and fucking shoot them around on the interwebs, those things have impact. Because the vast majority of people want to do the following. They don't want to do the research. They want to find people that they know, like, and trust. And then they want to utilize that research to say, this is a trusted source. I know that they verify the information. I'm going to push around this fact. That's what we all do. Nobody wants to independently validate every piece of information. It's hard. It's time consuming. Who has the time for that? I just want to paint my picket fence and eat my sausage pizza and fucking have an egg sandwich and go to work and live my life. And I want to listen to a couple jokes, watch The Simpsons, and go to sleep. I get it. We're, we all understand that. But for the, for, for, remember that if you don't know something or you can't independently validate that something is true, when you say shit and you act like you know that it's true or you so highly suggest that you think that it's true, it has a ripple effect that causes a lot of other people to take action and then continue to propagate that narrative to other people. So if you hear something and you just post about it and you don't know for sure or you looked into it for five minutes, people see that and then they talk about it and then they share it and then they repost it and then they repost that and then they repost and repost and then somebody at fucking work tomorrow at the water machine as they're 16 feet away from each other about that and it's like they don't even know where they heard it they just heard someone say it okay so when we when we take the when we take our precious time and we take our precious voice our words and we and we and we take a piece of information that we came across and then we blast it out to the stratosphere i just hope i just wish that we would all understand the the unforetold uh, uh power of, of those words because if all of us would just recognize how significant our own delivery our own delivery of news and information is to other people that's why that's why fake news gets moves around the web a lot faster than real news does because it's sensationalist it's it's interesting it's it's like causes people to it causes a stir it stirs the it stirs the stew it stirs the pot all right and i want also i would also like for people to remember that since we know that this is the case and we know that we're playing a big game of telephone and we know that a lot of people don't want to independently validate information I think that it's really important that we remember that if you haven't independently validated, but you're going to go and talk about it and you're going to go share about it and you're going to go act like it's true, that you may be doing a disservice to the general community by saying that something is the case when it actually, in fact, is not. Now, what I think is the most obvious, what I, what I think uh, is the most obvious representation of this, of this, I don't fucking know, but maybe policy that everybody seems to have is these queefs, is the queefs, all right? The queefs, the queef messages, message boards, and all this whole, just this jambalaya jamboree about these queefs. And the one that I saw, the one that I saw making its way around the, around the, around the water cooler the past couple days, is this whole Oprah has a fucking ankle monitor on. And I'm like, dog, no, like, uh, like, I hate everything on the planet. I hate everything on the planet. So for those who don't know, there's been a rumor, a queef rumor, whatever you want to call it, whatever, that's been going around that Oprah was wearing this ankle monitor. And Oprah's wearing this ankle monitor because uh, Oprah's wearing, like, cause Oprah's, uh, Oprah got arrested about 100 years ago, and Oprah's part of an international bag of donuts ring where they all sell donuts underground, and she's got this ankle monitor, and everybody knows it, and... Donnie is under the sea. Donnie's with Donnie and Pompeo are under the sea in a submarine. They got Blackhawks. They're controlling them with Starlink. Elon, Pompeo, they jumped out of the plane. Donnie is a time traveler, and it's all it all falls into the same fucking the same umbrella of just being baggery. So it's like, oh, Oprah has an ankle monitor because she got arrested six months ago, and it's like this. It's like, bro, oh, God, I. It's like. 
Does anybody have any critical thinking skills? Like Oprah, okay, let's just, I just want to dive into this Oprah dilemma, debacle, whatever, just for a second. Because I think it's just so fucking stupid. So stupid. And all the time that's being spent talking about Oprah wearing a fucking ankle monitor is otherwise productive time that could be used talking about things that actually fucking matter, but tickle me Elmo. Okay. Yo, I'm sweating here. I'm not even moving. I'm like, I'm breaking a sweat. Hold on a second. <clears throat> low energy, low energy Sasalado, low energy Jeb needs a fucking needs a sweat rag. Holy Christmas. <clears throat> okay. So Let's just, let's just let's just use this particular game of telephone to talk about Oprah and the fucking ankle monitor, okay? All right, cool, great. Oprah has a television television channel, right? Oprah is one of the wealthiest females on the planet, right? Oprah literally has her own television network. It's called OW, it's a, the Oprah Television Network. Oprah has absolutely no obligation to fucking go on camera, number one. She has enough money that she could retire. Her fucking great-grandchildren's grandchildren's grandchildren could fucking retire on a 190-foot yacht in fucking Saint-Tropez, and they could eat bonbons and caviar every meal of their life for their next five fucking hundred years and she could just do nothing about it and everything would be fine oprah has absolutely zero obligation to do fucking anything it does not matter oprah doesn't need to be on camera so let's just assume that oprah has a fucking ankle monitor which is the most preposterous the most preposterone fucking dumbass shit i ever heard of my fucking life but okay let's just assume that you have let's just assume that you have the super secret top secret underground intel that oprah has a fucking ankle monitor you think oprah is gonna be stupid enough to fucking shoot a interview at her fucking house and let them put the camera on her ankles pop wouldn't you just be like hey jabrones with the camera don't show my fucking ankle don't have a shot that includes my ankles in it i mean what i does does anything more need to be said about this particular topic? I'm just saying, what are we fucking stupid? I'm just saying, like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to smear everybody with a, with a, with a, with a butter knife bean bags. I'm just saying, what the fuck are we talking about? Like this chick, like how easy would that be? Don't have a shot that includes my ankles or I'll fire your ass. Cool. No problem, Oprah. I'll just cut the frame a little closer to your fucking knee. That's it. That's it. Yeah, because uh, the yeah, there's a fold in their boot. Yeah, because it fucking is. And I don't have to be there to know that any person with a fucking ankle monitor would not be stupid enough to allow somebody to cut that into the shot. Like, what do you fuck? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Okay? I just think that that's the, the, the dumbest shit. Pompeo's in a pineapple under the sea. It's like, no, dude. No. And while you're taking your precious time and taking the precious attention that you have of people looking at your fucking account for information, for information that is the vast majority of the time probably fucking true, and then you're going to come out and hit him with an Oprah has an ankle monitor, you completely devalue every other fucking thing that you have to say. And even if you're, even if you're right 96% of the time, if you come out with an Oprah ankle monitor shit, it's like, dog, no. Literally fucking no. I hate that. It's like, you're smart. Like, it's like, imagine if 99% of the shit that I said on this channel was true. And then I came out and I was like, yo, did you guys know that if you eat a banana upside down with a Q-tip in your ear, that you fucking, that you turn into an eagle and you can fly to the moon? People would be like, this guy's a fucking idiot. Now, don't get me wrong, beanbags. Someone would fucking do it. They'd be like, yo, I got the banana. Like, let me go get a Q- like, let me get a Q-tip and hang upside down. I'm just saying, like, let's let's just let's just put it into perspective. It's just like, bro, this woman is not stupid. Okay? I don't think that she's gonna be stupid enough to have a camera angle include her fucking ankle. 
But if you're gonna somehow think, if you're gonna somehow think that 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 you are smarter than this woman who's managed to fucking take her life from nothing to being a fucking self-made billionaire, that you're on fucking Instagram and YouTube and you're like looking with your fucking telescope at her ankles and you're like, dog, did I just see a fucking ankle monitor? And then you just and then you just and then you just fucking titty tap 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 on your fucking computer and you just post about this shit that somehow you're so fucking you're such a sleuth that you fucking decoded this bro get yo yo like i'll sh i'll show you where to pick up a banana and a fucking q-tip beanbag go down to the local park and hang upside down and i'll see you at the top of mount kilimanjaro you fucking cornmeal i'm just saying this shit is stupid and we're taking away, we are taking away otherwise productive time that could be spent talking about things that are actually fucking true or actually have the potential to be true. I'm just saying, I don't know if Oprah had an ankle monitor. I wasn't fucking there. But I can use my critical thinking skills to say, it's highly fucking unlikely that anybody with an ankle monitor would use their own television network in their own motherfucking house to have a camera angle that includes their fucking ankles. You idiot. I'm just saying... Sorry, like, I don't mean to be mean, but that shit is fucking stupid. And the fact that you would even try to propagate that to be true when you have absolutely no fucking evidence to suggest both critical thinking, fucking why, or anything other than a fucking camera angle, like, ah, like you're wasting our precious time. Let me sure go back, yeah. All right. So, now. So you're right most of the time, right? You, 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 you push out a lot of content that's really, really right. And you hit me with an upside down banana fly like an eagle. It's like, yo, it's like, how, first of all, how is this productive use of time, number one? Number two, you don't fucking know that. Number three, you have no evidence. Number four, if you're fucking wrong, which you probably are, this shit, is, this shit is counterproductive to the cause. You're using my precious time to talk about some shit that you don't know to be true, that you have no way of verifying, that you have no way of validating, and quite frankly, who fucking cares? I don't know anybody that's going to get arrested, put an ankle monitor on them, three months later, they're just shooting into me. Like, what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? What did she get arrested for? Do you know what she got arrested for? How the fuck do you know that? Whatever. I'm just saying, this shit is, counter, this shit is counterproductive use of time. It's time that could otherwise be spent on productive, on, on, on productive, productive use of time. Okay. <clears throat> what happened to my music here? I got blocked. I got blocked. All right. So I'm just saying, I think that that's counterproductive. I think it wastes people's time. <clears throat> the other one. Now I didn't know this cause I, I did a, I did a gagal search. Uh, <laughs> I did a gagal search. And I typed in like Oprah ankle monitor or some shit. I'm fucking sweating. And I did a search like Oprah ankle monitor. And the other one that it brought up was Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres. And I'm like, all right, cool. Ellen DeGeneres. So I watched the video because I hate everything. And I just want to squander my precious time on earth watching fucking YouTube videos of Ellen DeGeneres on a couch to see if she has an ankle monitor. Now I'll tickle, I'll tickle your ankle for just a second before I change topics. I watched the video of Ellen with the supposed ankle monitor and I'll give it to you, corn pop. I literally will give it to you. I literally will give it to you. At first glance, it looks like she's got an ankle monitor on. Yeah, sure. And at, for Oprah at first glance, yeah, looks like she has an ankle monitor on. I'll give it to you, beanbag. I'm just saying, Ellen is sitting on the couch. Ellen is sitting on the couch talking on her FaceTime or some bullshit to somebody and then she gets up and the shot shows her ankles then this woman puts her feet up on the table and shows her ankles in the video clip so again are you gonna be so fucking stupid that you're gonna just stand up and be like include my ankle and then i'll put my fucking i'll put my feet up on the desk like what are you talking about how are these people so stupid so it's like not only do you not fucking know, you can't validate to be true, but you're just assuming that these people are so stupid that they're allowing their camera people to allow this into the frame, that they're allowing people to put their ankles into the frame when they know that they have an ankle monitor on. It's like, dog, you, this is counterproductive. This is counterproductive time. This is counterproductive to the, to the, to the advancement of, of all of us. So, and the last thing that I'll say on this, I'll say on this topic, 
is I want people to understand the two, these two following things. Number one is that it's, I think that it's a really big problem that people blame anything that aligns with their current belief structure on something that instantly validates their mindset and validates it to be true. If you think that, if you think that Donnie Baseball is in a pineapple under the sea with Pompeo, traveling through Starlink with Nikola Tesla and Donnie's uncle, and they're puppeteering the fucking the, the, the government from under from underneath a bridge with a, with a troll, uh, three three leagues under the sea in a fucking submarine, then you see Oprah with the ankle monitor, and you're like, yeah, for sure. And it's like, dude, it's just like I just hope that we can all understand that just assigning something to be true because it aligns with your current belief is counterproductive, all right? So I'm just saying, it's like, I just don't think that that is, is helpful to anybody. And then the second thing is that I want people to also remember the following. People draw conclusions about people that appear in the public square and they demonize people that appear in the public square that they don't know, that they've never met, that they know nothing about. And everybody bases these assumptions on hearsay. They heard something from somebody else. I know a guy that knew a guy that worked for this person. I saw an, I know a person that knows a person that knew this person. I, I have an uh, underground upside down connection of a person that knew this person at some time and therefore the following is true. If you wanna hear that information and just internally digest it, save it in your memory bank and utilize it later to make sure that you are, you're on the up and up when it comes to meeting a person, Okay, fine. But if you're going to take that hearsay and you're going to go then continue to propagate it to other people, you're going to go and share that with other people. You're not helping. Do you understand how easy it is for people to get slandered by groups of other people? Think about it like this. Let's say that you're a person that employed 5,000 people. You employed 5,000 people. You're telling me that out of those 5,000 people, there's not going to be 10 people that fucking hate you? 10 people that were like, he was the worst boss ever. He was, uh, he was this, he was that. He used to come in the office and, and, and fart. He would, he would find the, the new employee and he'd fart in his eye and give him pink eye. Anybody could fucking say something and a disgruntled employee or a person that has a slight tilt as to what that person really did or the type of character that they are could very easily disparage that person in the public square and pass around a piece of information that could go from person to person to person to person to person. And by the time it gets to you on the other end, it's like, did you know that that guy came and he would shit in his hand and slap the new employee in the face with it? It goes from like farting on employee. And it's like the real truth of the story is like he farted in the break room like one time. It's like the, the guy farted in the break room one time, a person was on the other end and they were like, that smeared it in the new employee's face and it's like this is all counterproductive this is how this is how rumors get spread so i just i would just encourage people to remember that like when you look at like a celebrity or a public figure or a person that everybody knows and it's like oh i heard through this person through this person this person that they're a piece of shit it's like that that's that's why that's why public figures are like fuck these people because because you don't fucking know, you never met that person, you don't know that, that you don't know that story to be true, you don't know that that story could be even validated, and you're going around and you're gonna spread the rumor of that, you're gonna, and then you're gonna go even beyond spreading the rumor of it and you're gonna post about it. You're gonna post an article, you're gonna post an image, you're gonna post a video, you're gonna talk about it, and then you're gonna put it, save that into existence and then broadcast that around the world, which you heard from a hurt from a hurt from a hurt. It's just, I just don't understand how that's valid or val valuable. And it's just keep in mind that in the, in the event that you were to be, that you were to be, uh, you know, you were to be privileged enough that you were to get to that point, you better believe that a lot of people will be doing that shit about you. And it certainly would frustrate you to know that you farted in the break room one time and now people are telling stories that you took a dump in the new guy's bowl of cereal and made him eat it. Like, it's like, it's the game of telephone. It's the same shit. So it's like, if you can't independent, independently validate something to be true, like don't, don't talk about it and don't fucking act like you know, cause that shit is such bullshit and it's, it's completely counterproductive and I don't think it helps anybody. All right. That's my lesson on fucking the game of telephone. Now, <clears throat> the next one to stay on this same topic is like, I'm hearing today about this 
this Joey Basement's name not on these stimulus checks? Oh, God. And it's like, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, the word on the street is today is that Biden's name is not going to be on these stimulus checks that come out. His name's not going to be on the checks. Donnie's name was on the checks, but Biden's name's not on the checks. And this is somehow an indication that this is somehow an indication that this dude is like not the president or something. It's like, bro, I, I, I just don't understand. Jeez, I'm fucking sweating so much. I just don't understand how we can, whoa. I just don't understand how we can still be out there believing that for whatever reason that like, that like Donnie is the secret underground president. And like, it's just like, bro, I don't know, man. Look, I don't know. I'm just your, I'm just your everyday run of the mill, average corn pop beanbag. I don't know. I don't know any more than you do about this stuff. All I can use is my own critical thinking skills and try to figure out what actually makes sense in the world. But I'm just saying guys, like, I think it's fair to assume that like Donnie baseball is literally not the president. Like, I don't know. You, you can believe whatever you want, but like laws are being signed into, into policy. They're, they're producing, they're producing, like they're voting on bills and shit in the Senate, like checks. Are and, uh, it's just like, people are like, why are you sweating so much? I told you I had like a fever the last couple of days. I'm feeling better now, but it could be because of that. I don't know. Maybe because I'm just yelling. But I'm just saying that like people that think that this is somehow an indicator that Donnie is like the president still, it's like, I just don't understand how you could draw that conclusion. And like how many stimulus checks have been issued by a president in history, right? How many, I'm pretty sure the first time that those were ever done was George Bush. So it's like, you're talking two presidents in history have, have issued these stimmy checks and it's like, his name's not on it. And that indicates that he's not the, like, I guess, dude, I just don't know where you're getting that intel from. I just don't understand. I really just don't see how that's the case. <laughs> Somebody on Facebook says, <laughs> it says Krusty is our president. Yeah, honestly, that that's probably the case. It is highly likely that that is the case. <clears throat> As you're listening to X22 report, your brain is being back. Yeah, nope, yeah, absolutely. So again, it's like these, these, these conclusions that people are drawing about, well, I see this and this, this validates my existing belief. I just don't, again, I just don't understand how that's pr productive. I don't see how that's valid. And I think that you're ultimately uh, causing more problems by, by even suggesting that to be true when you just don't know for sure. Now, the other topic that I wanted to talk about was I saw this um, article Yo, California, California is like, like a real bag of cheese and, and garbage. And I just don't understand how anybody even continues to live in California, considering these absolutely insane rules. So I saw this article that was mentioned a couple of days ago that has been, has been in place for a while, but it's this California bill, um, that required corporations to appoint, uh, that it required corporations to appoint women to their board of directors by law, by decree. And I think it says by under the new law, 625 publicly held corporations will now need to include at least one person from an underrepresented community, either a racial minority or a self identified member of the LGBTQ community by the end of 2021. Include self individuals who self identify as black, African American, Hispanic, Latino, Asian, Pacific Islander, Native American, Native Hawaiian, Alaska Native, or who self identify as LGBTQ. A corporation with nine or more directors will need to have at least three directors from an underrepresented community by 2022. Bro. Oh my God. So here's what I just want to, I just want to tickle your beanbag about this one for a second. The fact that the government is making these types of rules. First of all, the government has no fucking authority to involve itself in a private business like this. It's absolutely preposterous. It's a big, big case of preposterone that they would even do this in the fucking first place, number one. Number two, if you had a corporation in California, you would probably, um, I don't know, maybe fucking leave. Secondly, 
Imagine if you imagine if you were on the board of directors. Imagine if you got put on the board of directors because um I don't know, maybe you deserve to be there and you just so happen to be gay or you happen to be a Pacific Islander or you happen to be Native American or you happen to be a woman. Could you imagine just wondering whether or not you're on that board of directors because of your fucking identity or your gender or your fucking race or your or your sexual orientation and and wondering if that was the case as opposed to you just being the highest qualified person to have that position? Forcing somebody to to have someone on their board because of their gender or because of their race or because of their sexual orientation is fucking sexist. It's fucking racist. It's all of the stuff. It's complete horseshit. And it's like, if people understand how the free market works, we have to understand that the free market rewards people that choose the best person for their business. If somebody is the highest qualified person to be on your board of directors and they so happen to be a woman or they so happen to be black or they so happen to be Hispanic or they so happen to be lesbian or homosexual or whatever else, that was the best decision that you could make for your business. If you chose to not make that decision and you decided to pass that person up because of your sexism, because of your bigotry, because of your racism, the next company would hire that person and put them on their board of directors and they would get the benefit, the upside benefit of employing that person that you decided to pass up because you were a fucking sexist or because you were a racist. That's how the free market works. No one is holding a gun to that person's head to say that they need to work at ABC company. They could just go get a job at the other company. They could just go be on the board of directors at another company. If you're so good that you're on the board of directors of a fucking gigantic corporation, maybe you could start your own corporation. Maybe you have the business where with all to go and start your own thing or be on another board of directors somewhere else this is such so fucking stupid and i've talked about this before but it's like if you honestly thought that if you honestly thought that women get paid 78 cents on the dollar for doing the exact same job and and that's not because of a variety of other factors but you think that that's just pure and simple why would any company employ men <clears throat> Why would you employ men? You would only employ women and you would have you'd be able to undercut all of your employees by 22% or whatever number that they say. You could pay every woman 78 cents on the dollar and you'd destroy it. You just picked up a 22% margin on your cost of labor. Why would you employ men? If you could employ women for a fraction of the cost, why would you employ men? You wouldn't. So the fact that the government's going to step in and, 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 and ensure and guarantee that you have to fucking employ a woman, you have to employ a whatever in these specific positions. And then not only that, they're going to rule by decree that you have to have three people in that position. What the fuck is that? What if those three people were not as qualified? How about the, how about the white man or how about the just man? How, and like, I'm not saying woe is me for white men. I'm just saying, imagine, imagine the white man that was going to get that position because they were the highest qualified, that they worked their whole life, that they built up their position in that company. And they have a position on that board of directors that they now have to lose that position because they're not gay or lesbian or trans or fucking Hispanic or whatever else. Wouldn't they just be like, all right, I'm gay. Okay. I'm gay. You could self-identify as gay. So how much you want to bet that three men three white men or three men, whatever, on those boards of directors are going to be like, I'm gay now. What are they going to say? You're not gay? It literally says in the law, self-identify. It's like, okay, they self-identify. It like literally come out like, all right, who, <laughs> who on the board of directors wants to say they're gay now? <laughs> this is a charade. This is a fucking charade. I'm just saying it's a charade. Oh, you have to identify literally like three dudes are gonna be like, I'm gay <laughs> or, or even better yet. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a T I'm a T I'm T <laughs> they're, like, they're like, turns out bills a T it's like, okay, how are you going to validate that? How are you going to prove that that person is not gay? You can't self-identify. So this law is a complete fucking show. It's complete horseshit and bullshit in every way. So 
I think that I think that people should just understand that a lot of this stuff is a show. It's complete bullshit. They're just virtue signaling. They're trying to garner up some votes. They realize that this represents this represents a small minority of the people that are potentially voting for them, but they know that it gets them a lot of good press. All the woke press that comes as a result of doing these things, that's what they're doing it for. They understand that the press is part of the game. So they're just playing in they're just playing the game. They're like, "Oh yeah, we passed this inclusive law. It's so kind of inc it's so kind of inclusive. Three, three out of nine. Yo, Newsom, in the online signing ceremony for this bill, when we, this is this, this is this quote from Newsom. When we talk about racial justice, we talk about empowerment. We talk about power. We need to talk about seats at the table. This fucking asshole. This guy is a chooch. A great A chooch. And two and two million people in the state of California agree that this guy's a chooch. So it's like <sighs> forcing people by decree to make a decision based on somebody's race or gender or, or sexual orientation is racist. It is sexist. No one else is thinking in terms of race and sex. No one else is thinking in terms of sexual orientation. When someone is buying your fucking products, these are these are huge corporations. These are the 650 corporations. No one is going and buying an item from a corporation and being like, are there any LGBTQ members on the board of direct? No one cares about that because people don't think in terms of race like that. People don't think in terms of sexual orientation like that. People don't think in terms of gender like that. The only people that think in terms in those terms are people that are racist, sexist, sexist and homophobic or whatever else. It's like people, the vast majority of people don't think in those terms. And the party that's always so, so in the, in the side of the equation of people that always are so interested in sex and gender and, and, and sexual orientation, they're the ones that cannot stop talking about this. They can't stop bringing it into the forefront and trying to find this equity, equity, equity. Bah, bah, bah. It's like they're thinking in terms of race. It's just, it's so fucking stupid. They, they, they look at a cross section and they, they group people by race and gender and they're like, all these people, like they say this neighborhood is this type of person or that, and that means that it was underrepresented. It's like, have you ever considered that there might be some other factors that contribute to the fact that these things are happening that are common amongst a certain gender, a certain race, a certain subjects and a section of people? It's never about why, it's never about could it be. It's just like, it is this way and therefore everything has to be, everything has to be drawn back to that, that being the result. Because you're la Latino, because you're, gay because you're trans therefore the following is true every single person cross-section blanket statement about all of them at one time no one ever takes into consideration the other vast variety of factors that could go into this stuff no one cares about that they don't care about that all they care about is talking about this super this super woke bullshit and 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 putting it out there that somehow that somehow because of this then this <clears throat> so I just think it's uh it's counterproductive. It's a bag of dicks, beanbags, and it's truly garbage. The fact that the fact that you have I don't know, it's just like like when I go on and like I get it. I get it. I get the theory of it. I get the theory of it. You want to balance out the playing fields, whatever. Here's here's black owned businesses at Target. Here's minority owned businesses on Uber Eats. I get it, but that's racist. It's racist. And if you want to say, and look, I would feel that way if it was about any race. People, again, I would just encourage people to not look at my skin and make a conclusion because I couldn't possibly understand because I'm white. I couldn't possibly understand because I'm a cisgender man. And I'm a, it's like, dude, I, like I'm just a person. I didn't choose to be white. I didn't choose to be this way. This is just the way that I am. So look at the substance of the argument and don't base it on my fucking skin color. Just look at the substance of the argument. You artificially elevating a business because it's owned by X or owned by Y is fucking racist. It's like no one is like... What happened to just a business being a business? It's just, it's like, okay, so you artificially elevate a black business 
because it's minor it's black owned black owned restaurants well what if the black owned per, what if the black owner of that restaurant has five million dollars and what if the white restaurant owner that would have otherwise been in that position because their restaurant has better food and better service and a, and a better menu and more reasonable prices and has been working really hard to succeed on uber eats what if that guy has five hundred thousand dollars in the bank and the black owned business has five million dollars in the bank and he owns 600 restaurants and he just happens to be a black owned restaurant you're just assuming that because he's black that he has a chip on his shoulder he or she is black. you're just assuming because it's a black owned business that they're at some disadvantage you're just assuming that because it's black it needs to be artificially raised in the marketplace in order to give it a fair shake to give it a fair shot that's fucking racist you're a fucking racist you are racist. I'm just saying, like, I'm not here to, I'm not here to give you a, give you a twisted bag of malarkey and act like it to be true. I'm just saying, just because a business is black owned, just because a business is minority owned, that doesn't mean that they're at a disadvantage. You fucking racist. There's a lot of black people within 50 fucking, within five miles of me that have 500 times as much money that I have. What is, what, who, who walks into a restaurant and be like, what is the race of the person that owns this establishment? Before I, before I parcheesel my six inch submarine sandwich, who, what is the race of the owner of this establishment? Is it a man or woman? Is he or she gay? Are they black or white? Like, what are you talking about? No one fucking thinks like that except for racists. No one fucking thinks like that. And I would and I would think that it's probably safe to say that the least amount of racists that have ever existed in the history of human existence exist right now. Unpopular opinion, Beanbag. I'm just saying. Statistically speaking, this is the probably the safest time to be alive ever probably the least racist time to be alive ever and i'm not saying that they don't exist i'm just saying to say that a black owned business needs a boost on uber eats to create some type of equality is racist you're saying that they need it they need it more than a latin than a latino they need it more than an asian american they need it more than a white man there's plenty of poor white people there's plenty of undereducated white people there's plenty of white people in poverty to just say and like and like this is the thing joey basement goes on tv and literally says in his fucking town hall with anderson pooper on the clown news network he's like oh a lot of latin and, and african-american people in the urban communities don't know how to get on the internet a lot of white people don't know how to get on the internet. I would wager that the vast majority of people know how to get on the fucking internet, but I'm just saying that shit's racist. That's racism. Compartmentalizing a group of people based on their race or gender and assuming that they can't do something because of their race or gender or sexual orientation is racist. It's gen like, that's what it is. So it's just like, like take your virtue and stuff it in a sack beanbag and throw it off the bridge because the vast majority of people don't think like that. And nobody is out here being like, well, I was going to buy my, I was going to buy my barbecue. I was going to buy my barbecue rib sandwich from this place, but it's owned by a white man. Therefore, it's like, yo, you're dumb. And like the vast majority of people don't think that way. They don't support businesses that way. Like people go to the businesses that give them products and services that they love at a reasonable price with great quality service. That's what they do. That's what people do. I'm just saying. But whatever, who cares, right? <clears throat> that doesn't fit into the that doesn't fit into the woke narrative. Uh well, it's not it's not woke enough. Therefore, let's all fucking <clears throat> Now I've talked about this before. And this is something that is totally true. Every almost every single thing that the government does has the equal has the has the equ equivalent opposite in effect of what its original intent was okay when you say that like when when a person when a business employs a person they have to they have to include the inherent risk that comes along with employing that person they have to say 
Well, would the, could this person take a lot of days off? Could this person, uh, is this person gonna be lazy? Am I gonna spend all this money to invest into building them up in my company and teaching them stuff and then they're gonna take it elsewhere? That's why when you look at somebody's resume, you like to see how long they were at a previous company. Well, they've been there for five years, five years. If you see a guy that went one year, one year, one year, one year, one year, you include that in the amount of money that you're gonna pay for them. You include that in their potential salary. You include that in your mind when you hire that person. You got a person that's there for one year, a person that's there for five years. Okay, you have to include these in your, in your assumptions of what that person's gonna cost. What's the inherent risk that comes along with employing that person? All of these equality laws that come to, all these equality laws that come along with you of, of someone being able to sue because they were fired based on race or gender or sexual orientation and all these other things, what it does, it has the opposite effect of what everybody seems to think that it has. And what it does is it creates, it creates a chip on your shoulder that allows you to weaponize that in the event that you get terminated and say, well, I was terminated because of X. Think about it as an employer. Okay, if I'm going to hire you and I have a big company, as soon as, I, as soon as I have a big company, as soon as I have a lot of money, that means there's a target on my head. No matter what, any, any big company has a target because they know that a potential employee could bring them into litigation in the event that there's a wrongful termination. You've got five candidates, same resume, same qualifications, same salary, all applying for the exact same job. Well-dressed, well-spoken, kind, ambitious, ready for the job. You have a white man, you have a white woman, you have a black man, you have a gay man, you have a trans whatever. Of all of these people, in the event that you hire that person, they're there for two years, and then you fire them because they're being lazy, because you don't like the work that they did, because you need to terminate them because maybe you guys have to downsize. Maybe your business is not making as much money as it made the previous year. You have to fire that person. You now fired these people. You hired all five of them. Or whatever I just said, five. You had to fire them all. How many of those people could sue you for wrongful termination because of their sex, their gender, or, or whatever? Is that the same thing? I don't even know anymore. It's unwoke. I'm going to get canceled. Because of their gender? Is it Which one is it? I don't even know. I can't even fucking follow woke logic. Because of their gender, because of their race, or because of their sexual orientation. Who can, who can fire? Who can sue you for that? The white man fucking can't. The woman can, the black guy can, the homosexual can, and the T can. Now, which represents the most which represents the most potential litigation risk in the event that there's a firing? Okay. Which one are you gonna hire now? You're gonna hire the white man because it represents the lowest potential future risk risk of litigation in the event that you fire them. Because how the fuck are you going to prove that you didn't fire them because they're gay? Didn't fire them because they're uh, uh, because they're black? Didn't fire them because they're gay? Or whatever, a woman. It's just like people don't understand the negative effects. People generally believe that most people are dumb. And that's the wrong assumption to make because a lot of people are really, really smart. And it's like to think that these employers, these employers that happen to build a large company that makes tens of millions of dollars, that employs hundreds of people, that's constantly producing, you think that they're just going to read the dictate from the government and be like, okay, all right, we'll do that. It's like, you think they're fucking stupid? They just got there? They just got there just by being fucking stupid? What's going to happen is, is that you're making the white male employee the most employable of all of those people because it represents a potential litigation risk down the line that that person. Now, I'm not saying that that's the right thing to do. I'm not saying that I endorse that. I'm just saying, think about it. Because a white guy can't say, well, they fired me. They can't. Fi they fired me because I'm a white man. It's like that's not gonna. That's not gonna hold up. But any of the other reasons could. So it's a problem. It just represents. It represents a problem. And the same. And the same way goes with. The same way goes with the fifteen dollar minimum wage and all of these other policies. It's like. 
the government stepping in and interfering in all of these private business decisions is counterproductive. It's going to have the opposite effect of its original intent. And I think most people fail to understand and realize the significance of how these things backfire. So it all comes down to the same thing. It's like these woke beliefs, these woke policies, and everybody not understanding how the free market works is counterproductive. So that's my thought on the matter. And again, like <clears throat> the $15 minimum wage is the same exact thing. It's like people think that that's going to raise people out of poverty. There was this article that came out the other day. <clears throat> what the fuck was the article? The one in the Washington Post where it was like Biden showers, Biden showers, stimulus check, showers money on Americans or something like that. The fucking dumbest headline to ever be. Biden stimulus showers money on Americans sharply cutting poverty and favoring individuals over business yo let's listen if you think that if you think that joseph garbinet marionette weekend at bernie's biden shout showering americans with a 1400 hundred dollar check is gonna cut poverty you're out of your fucking mind you are out of your fucking mind and the chooch the fucking chooch that wrote this headline at the washington post should fucking should, should should be ashamed of themselves for writing such a fucking stupid headline. That is the dumbest shit I ever heard in my life. Defining move of presidency. Defining move. That is so fucking dumb. Fourteen hundred dollars is gonna lift you out of poverty. Get the fuck out of here. What's the average? What's the average rent in America? How much does it cost to fill your fucking grocery basket one time in America? It's like, I would bet that if you had a family or you had a couple people, you're spending 200 bucks at the grocery store, 200 bucks. Oh, so you're lifted out of poverty by you're fucking out of your mind. Stupid dude. And then I saw another article today that said, it said like 75% of millennials or some bullshit. I don't even know because I don't care because I hate everything as the world's garbage. But it's something like 75% of millennials plan on spending their stimulus check on the stock market or on stocks. And it's like, yo, dog, do we not understand that the government is printing money out of thin air, giving it to people that didn't do anything to produce value, and then those people are then investing it in the stock market, which then lifts the price of the stock, which then helps the billionaires and millionaires that you guys so callously fucking demonize at every single turn. It's like, what people need to understand is that when, when, money, when money is passed from person to person, there's an output that is created as a result of that money being exchanged. There's, a produ there's something that is produced Money, money exchanges from my hands to you and you had to produce a good, you had to produce a service, you had to procure value for me in order for me to give you that money, in order for that money to exchange. When you print money out of thin air, you have the same two people that now don't have to exchange money in order for that good or service to be created. You give the money to somebody else that didn't produce anything to get it, and then they take that money and they bid on the same good that was already produced, the same value that was created, except they got that money for free. No output had to be created in order for that money to exist in the first place. And then it's being used to purchase that product or service. So that means there's more money in the marketplace, but the same amount of goods. So supply and demand teaches us that if more money is in the market, but the same amount of products and services are there, what happens to that? The price goes up. The price goes up. So it's like, if you if you just print all this money out of thin air and you introduce it to the market where no products or services have been created, you're just gonna bid up the price of those goods. All the money that's being spent on these stimulus that's being printed out of thin air is gonna go into the stock market and reward all the people at the top the most. And then you're going to have all the price of consumer goods, all the low priced items, the grocery items, your paper towels, your new, your, your, uh, your tissues, your, your brooms, your, your, uh, Windex, your bread, your rice, all of those things are going to go up. 
your McDonald's cheeseburgers are gonna go up. All of the things that the that the people the people with the with the lowest amount of cash, the lowest amount of capital, the lowest amount of income, all the things that all those people rely on being inexpensive are all gonna be more expensive because of these government decrees. The fifteen dollar minimum wage is gonna bring the cost of goods up for so many small items that it's insane. It's gonna hurt the people at the bottom the most. So you have the same amount of products and goods and services, and you have so much more money in the marketplace. That's why, that's why the price of gas is going to go up. And then it's like, and then it's like, think about it like this. Okay. A person that has $50 million and a person that has $500 have to buy the same tank of gas. Unless the billionaire is driving a fucking rocket ship, like, or you could say they're driving a Tesla. Okay, fine. The price of electricity is going up. The price of gas is going up. Everybody uses the same gallon of gasoline. Yet the price of gas goes up 30, 40, 50%. Who does that hurt? That hurts the guy that has no money, not the guy that has all the money. So all of these, all of these tanks of gas that everybody has to get purchased by, it hurts all the people at the bottom. Joe is supposedly lifting people out of poverty. You cut the Keystone XL pipeline. Here's a fucking newsflash. That's worse for the environment. Now you got to ship all that gas. You got to ship all that oil on fucking trains, which is going to be worse for the environment, which is going to create more of a bottleneck, which is going to make it cost more money, which is going to mean that the cost of gas goes up. You don't allow you don't allow the United States to produce as much oil as it was producing. The cost of gas goes up. All that money that we were spending to stay here inside the United States now goes to our adversaries abroad. Now you have foreign producers of oil making a whole lot more money because we have to import all that oil. On top of all that, the United States barely exports anything. Our exports are extremely low. Our trade deficits are massive. So you're importing all this oil. You're importing all these products from China. You're importing all of this shit. Meanwhile, our exports are next to nothing. Meanwhile, you're making sure everybody's fat and happy with this illusion money that was printed out of thin air and you expect for prices not to go up. So the prices of consumer goods are going up. The prices of gas are going up. All of this woke logic about buying electric cars. Yo, electric cars are fucking expensive, you beanbag. You know what? You know what? There's not a lot of electric cars, used cars. You know how many cars on the road are used cars? A lot of them. You know how many fucking people don't buy brand new fucking cars? I for one don't have a you. I don't have a new car. I've been working my entire life. I have enough money in the bank that I could purchase a new car. I have enough credit. I have a credit card. I have a line of credit. I could purchase a new car, but I don't buy a new car because I don't think that I have enough money to buy a new car. I buy a used car. I've never owned a new car in my entire life. And the vast majority of people don't buy new cars. They buy used cars. So when you go to buy your fucking used electric car, because that's the only types of cars that are allowed on the road because of bing, bang, boom, Joey basement, all the people at the bottom are going to get clapped the most. Meanwhile, as the fucking, as, as, as less and less people need gasoline, the price of fucking gasoline is going to have to go up. It's just like, like our production of gas goes down. It's like, it hurts the people at the bottom. These are counterproductive measures, but people that don't look beyond, people that don't understand the depth of a situation and only like to just rain down their woke logic on people, don't understand the, the adverse effects and the, and the severity that all these measures have on the people at the very bottom. All of your, all of your wokeness is clapping you in the back. And it's like, people think that this, this stimulus is fucking, it's like, you're fucking out of your mind. The stimulus is helping lifting people out of poverty. You're out of your fucking mind. Every man, woman, and child in the United States of America is indebted to the government. $88,000. Over $230,000 per family based on the national debt right now. $88,000. And a $1.9 trillion stimulus? That's insane. I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the entire GDP of the entire United States all of our GDP for the entire year. If the United States government did not spend a single dollar, not one dollar in a calendar year, that $1.9 trillion would not even pay back all of our debt. So you're gonna go and sign off another $1.9 trillion. Now people will be like, oh, you only care when there's a Democrat in charge. No one cared when Donnie was in charge. No one's fucking saying that, asshat. I'm just saying, like, look, Donnie, Donnie spent us into oblivion just the same. And I'm not, people are like, you are a Trumper, Trumper. I'm not going to sit here and act like Donnie Baseball was the most fiscally responsible person on the planet. I'm not going to act like that's the case. Because the fact of the matter is, is Donnie spent us 
spent us like crazy. He was the fat. He was the most spending president ever. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure he spent just as much as Barry O, or if not close, maybe even more than Barry O did in eight years. He did in four years. So I'm not gonna act like Donnie Baseball was was fucking god. Because he spent us into oblivion. Donnie also said he was going to balance the trade deficits. The trade deficits. You know what? The trade deficits are the highest they've ever been ever in the history of the Republic. So, like, Donnie was great in a lot of respects. Don't get me wrong. But, like, dude, Donnie spent us off the fucking off the rails, too. Like, let's not get it twisted. And some people are over here, like, hoping Donnie comes back in four years. And, like, I get it. And, like, I hope so, too, kind of. Because I think he was right on a lot of policies, but like, you had somebody with the same policies that maybe that maybe was uh, a little bit more refined in the delivery. I don't know. Maybe that might be a little bit better. I'm just saying. Like we kind of got gassed. Like, I just think that there's there's a lot to understand. It's like you can be pro Donny. You can be you can be pro all of the things that he did. But that doesn't mean that you have to lock, stock, and barrel support every single thing that he did and, and, and think the guy is a deity. It's like, I think that he was absolutely necessary for the, for the time. I think that he did a great job. I think that, quite frankly, he was one, probably one of the better presidents we've had in modern history. But I'm not saying that every single thing that the guy did was, was great. I, I don't know that the lockdowns, which he was all right with, I don't know that those were so great. I don't know that the fucking all this Corona clap juice and everybody being pushed toward this I don't know that that's so great and like that was his thing. I don't know that the emergency whatever the fuck with the FDA, I don't know that that was so great. So it's like, I don't know, man. Like the guy's just a guy, let's just say. Yeah, and everybody is like still banking on the fact that they just think that he's like in a pineapple under the sea controlling the government, waiting for the waiting for Joey Basement to slip up so he can like clap everybody at the same time. It's like, I don't know, man. I just don't I just don't think that that's the case. But whatever. Whatever. <clears throat> so, I don't know. It's just like, I just, I think that we have to understand that the real depth of this stuff matters. The real depth of understanding. your team ball game or whether your team Joey basement or whether your team nothing I don't care you have to understand that if you're gonna talk about something or you're gonna try to understand something or you're gonna even conversate with people and be and be intelligent about it that you have to you have to understand the true depth of what something means you can't just figure out the thing that you align with right at the beginning and be like yep oh they're gonna force the board of directors to have LGBTQ or underrepresented minor if you don't understand what that means, if you don't understand what that means, crisis. And I would say that it's likely that we're already there in a lot of ways. And like, I don't know how it'll play out. I can tell you that I certainly don't think that fucking Bitcoin is gonna be the thing that gets us out of it. Um, but. I just think that there's a lot of misinformed people and I think that there's a lot of really highly informed people that are misinformed 10, 20% of the time and then they go and post that stuff and share that stuff and act like they know it to be true and it aligns with their existing beliefs so they're like, yeah, this must be the case and it's like, it's like I just don't see how that's productive. So that's all I'm saying. Um, I'll take some questions if anybody has any questions. I see a couple people jamming. <laughs> Someone on Instagram says, "Do you hate pants?" Yeah, I do hate pants. If I could, if I could not have not wear pants, that would be. I would never want to eat pants, or I mean, wear pants. <laughs> I looked at the banana and I was like, "Eat pants." Florida Meatball says, "Are you going to start your own podcast?" Yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe. I mean, this is kind of like my podcast. I go on here and I rip for an hour, and you guys are there, sharing in it. So. Yo, thanks to the people that bought badges on Instagram. Let me just give a quick shout out to those people. Cherie says, are you still doing custom shirt orders? Yeah, of course. Um, and M. Cromer, how old are you? I just turned 34 last week. Uh, big thanks to the people that bought badges on Instagram. Thank you, Lauren Ashley.
Thank you, Heather Jean316. Thank you, Miss Jade XO. Always buying badges. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Chi Chi A. Thank you to Megan Hayward. And thank you, A Mark Life. Appreciate that for buying badges on Instagram. Thank you so much. Appreciate the support. <clears throat> Sasha says, have you done 75 hard? No, I have not. Uh, his and her picnic says, who's your favorite of all time DJ producer? Bass Nectar was my favorite. He like canceled himself. Lydia's happy place. Have you considered running for office? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I don't know. It, not right now. I mean, I'm. I, I don't know. I'd rather. I'd rather be. I'd rather be a, a thought leader of sorts. I think I could cause a lot more, bring a lot more value in that realm for now. But I don't know. How did he cancel himself? He got accused of some shit, and then he. We're basically like retired. <laughs> Leah on Facebook says, damn, you're young. Yeah, I guess. Seth says, what do we do to bring things back to normal? Fuck if I know. Do a lot of research, talk to people about it. Share the truth. John X Reynolds says, how often do you get a haircut? Every like 12 days, 10 days. You can be Ivanka's VP. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yo, on Instagram, ask the questions here in the corner. Like, go down in the corner under the badges and ask questions there. That way it's easy for me to follow them. Did you hear anything about Joey Basement losing it in a hardware store? No. Sarah says, how long do you think they keep Joey Basement propped up? I think he's I think he stays the actual president for a year maybe I'd be surprised if by this time next year he was the president it's gonna be crusty it's gonna be president crust I'm just saying it's just my assessment I think it's crusty president Ryan says who's your baseball idol I don't know that I have a baseball idol uh, I guess good hitter good fielder leader team captain I guess Derek Jeter stayed with the same team his whole life, her whole career. I thought that was pretty cool. So I'd, I guess Derek Jeter, I like the loyalty. <clears throat> Yika Gale, how old are you? 34. Heather Jean, 316, what's your favorite food? Favorite food? Uh, probably, probably pho. I really like pho. I think pho is pretty good. I'm a big fan of pho. He was so lost in a hardware store. <laughs> oh, thanks, Gina. Yeah. Stephanie says, when I watch your videos, you, I feel like you are reading my mind. I've heard that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, I just try to, I just talk about the thing that's just made me feel the craziest in the last couple of days. <clears throat> Ryan says, I figured with all the baseball analogies, you had to have one. I played a lot of sports, and I think that in a lot of ways, baseball is a good analogy because there's a lot of dynamics to baseball um, that just I just use it as analogies a lot. Paul says, "What do you think about dollar bill buying property?" I think uh, I think that if you've ever played the game of Monopoly before. You understand the value of property and how property goes over time. Buying up farmland, I mean, it seems to me like that's a very valuable asset to stake a claim over, controlling physical space. And when you already have a ton of other m monies, I think controlling physical space is uh, makes sense. There's a lot of things you could do with that. Um, so could it be because he wants to turn all the farmland into woke farmland and, and make fucking chemically grown beef possibly I think that it's I think it could be used as a bargaining chip later in life I think that <clears throat> I think the one thing that's going to become more and more 
part of the equation in the next few years. And if I had to, if I had to pinpoint, <laughs> Biggie, what are you doing? If I had to pinpoint where I think the, a problem is going to come in the future, I think that what we're going to hear a lot about is we're going to hear climate related lockdowns. I think that climate lockdowns are going to be the next thing after the, the Corona clap is out of the picture because the fucking cases are going to be whatever. I think that we're going to hear a lot about climate related lockdowns. And I think that what people are going to say is that, Hey, you need to drive. You can't drive this day of the month or you can't do this on this day of the month because of climate. It's everything's going to be for the climate, the climate. It's going to be, you can't run your electricity on this day. You can't run your heat on this day. You can't drive more than X miles in a month. You can't, you can't contribute X carbon footprint for the environment, the environment. Because it's one of those things that's like hard for anybody to combat. Like, oh, don't you love the earth? Don't you love the streams and the elephants? Don't you want the elephants to exist? Don't you love the elephants? It's like, yeah, we all love elephants, you jabron. I'm just not, I just don't know how it's fucking reasonable to think that your average everyday citizen is producing enough of a carbon footprint that me not driving my fucking car 100 miles in a month is going to make any difference to it. How about all the other people that are polluting an ungodly sum? How about China? How about them? How about India? How about all these other countries that are producing so much more pollution than we are but who cares about that right who cares about that because that's unwoke because they didn't sign the paris bag of dicks agreement okay it's like whatever man so i just think that what we're going to hear a lot of in the in the in the coming years is going to be climate related lockdowns and climate related wokeness where it's like you have to move your residents to this place we have to consolidate in cities to save farmland for climate or we have to fucking not drive cars for X amount of days because of climate. And you're gonna see all this stuff start to get pushed because of climate, climate as the, as the one point as that all things need to revolve around. And it's the biggest load of shit ever because again, what the people, what, what the vast majority of, let's just call it progressive whatever logic, bag of shit logic, is that they are banking on you being dumb and not paying attention. They're banking on you not being aware of the depth of understanding that is required in order for you to critically think about how something how something impacts real really impacts people. So they're just like, well, these people are too dumb to read the Paris Climate Accord. They're too fucking stupid to look into it. They're just going to look at Paris Climate Agreement, Paris whatever the fuck, and they're going to be like, yeah, as long as Al Gore and, and Barry O fucking endorse it, then it must be good. As long as Joseph Garbinett got rolled into a ball and, and fucking kobe into the hoop where he like signed it on his way through the hoop and then he just falls flat on the floor and fucking dies like a bag of corn. They're like, yeah. It's a gift for other countries. It's a big bill to the United States. It's a fucking bag of shit. But hey, who cares? They're going to bank on you not reading that shit. They're going to bank on you not knowing that the biggest polluters in the world don't have to do shit about it. They're going to bank on you not doing the research to know that every other major economy in the entire world went down this year, except for China. Who cares about that, right? Don't follow the money. Don't look at anything. Don't pay attention. Paying attention is tap. Paying attention is racist, sexist. It's xenophobic. Xenophobic. Equity, equity, equity. It's all about equity. It's like cool. Cool, 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 cool. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you got what was the article the other day about the hundred and nineteen fucking illegal immigrants? You can't even say illegal. What do you say? I don't even know. I don't even know the woke term that they use for it now. But you can't even say illegal immigrant. You can't say that. You can't say alien. Non-resident, illegal non-resident, or unlawful, who gives a shit? These people are dumb as fuck. It's like 119 people came over the border with the corona clap, and they're like, yeah, it's fine, release them into the fucking thing. Meanwhile, meanwhile, a husband can't sit with their wife at an ultrasound to this day. <laughs> cool. All right, that seems fine. Fuck off. These people are so full of shit. So it's just tragic. 
Anyways, back to the original point I was saying. I think that the climate lockdowns are going to become a lot more of a thing. I think that this climate is going to be used to weaponize a whole variety of woke things. And I think that as it relates to Dollar Bill and buying up all this land, I could see him being like, I'm donating this land to climate. It will not be used for farmland anymore because of the climate. We're not gonna we're not gonna steal Mother Earth's resources. We're not gonna we're not gonna farm this land. We're not gonna let the we're not gonna let the fucking uh, cows fl flatulate. We're not gonna let the cows fart because it's gonna be polluting to climate bullshit. They're so backwards. They they, they again, like I said, they think we're stupid. Uh, the that original document from AOC about the cows farting. Anybody that even understands, even that even just does the most basic amount of research, cows don't really fart that much. Cows burp. So the, 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 the supposed gas that's coming off from these cows is coming from burping, not farting. So it's just like, even that, it's just, again, it just shows the most basic, just the most basic element of research. Like you, you do fucking five minutes of research and it's like, I'm not a fucking cow expert. Like I don't know shit about cows. I never spent more than 15 minutes with a cow in my fucking life, a living cow. Like I seen a cow, they moo, they got the spots. You go to the farm, the, the, the fucking, the whatever, you go, wow, look at the cows. They ring the bell, ding, 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 whatever. But it's just like anybody that just even does a slight bit of research understands that these people are full of shit. And every single thing that they say is a complete malark. But whatever, who cares, right? Who cares? Research is stupid. Research is racist. Jen says, how do you even know that? Because I fucking do research. Because when I hear shit, I'm like, is that even fucking true? And I just, I just hit the gagal. I, I didn't like go to the library and be like, give me the, give me your latest publication on cow farts. Like, I don't know. I just did a little gagal. I just hit the gagal. I hit the duck, duck, fucking go off, queen. His and her picnic says, stop saying people are waking up. Don't doubt fucking matter. They're in control of this shit house. Who gives a shit if you wake up? We're fucked. Well, that's a, that's a shitty, that's a shitty attitude. His and her picnics. That's a, that's a dog shit attitude. Who gives a shit? We're fucked. Cool. Uh, take that attitude and, and take it over the fence and take a, take a hike. That's a, that's a garbage attitude. <laughs> we're fucked. Yeah, we're fucked kind of, but not really. The world changes. If you can get if you can get people to rally around to rally around an idea, the world can always be changed. If everybody in history said, "Oh, we're fucked," and just gave up, we'd all be dead. We'd all be toast. We'd all be enslaved. Never underestimate the power of a of a of a very small minority of people that works really hard to convince a, a very large swath of people. Because the winds of change often blow in the direction of the greater good. And I would wager that in all the really and really in all the in all the really bad times in human history where it seemed like there was absolutely no chance for us to turn it around, we've managed to turn it around. So I just think that that attitude of like we're fucked, who cares? Let's not pay attention is stupid. It's counterproductive. It's it's, it's like well, I could tell you this much: we're certainly not going to get there if you have that attitude. You know, if everybody's like we're fucked, meh, it's like okay, well then. Think that, believe that, approach your life that way. But that's not the right attitude. Imagine if every person that was 400 pounds was like, it's too late, I'm fucked, it's fucked. You can't have that attitude. You gotta always believe that you can turn it around, no matter how bad it is. I'm surely not gonna give up, why the fuck, like why would we? Why would we give up? All right, a bunch of people ask questions on here. Casey Marie says, "Do you think taxation should be legal?" Yeah, of course. Taxation should should have should obviously be legal. It's necessary for the government. It's necessary for the government to have cash. So yeah, of course, like taxation should be legal. Yes, because the government needs money to exist. So taxation has to exist. We need taxation. It's absolutely necessary. There's no question that we don't need that. There's no question as to whether or not we need that. What I think is the big problem is that people somehow think that that because there's not enough money for X thing, that we have to tax more people to get that money for that thing. Like I was watching John Oliver the other day, and I love watching John Oliver because he's a fucking corporate shill. And uh, he like works for fucking AT&T. 
He's just like a total corporate shill. And he says things in such a matter of fact way where it's like, you're a fucking idiot if you don't, if you don't follow this dictate, which I understand. I get that. I get that way of arguing your point. That's fine. But he's we need to tax our way into this. We need to tax. We need to get more taxes. It's like, dog, the United States, the federal government generates a fuckload of tax money as it is. What we should be less, what we should be less supportive of, and more support, what we should be less supportive of, is extracting more cash from the people, taxing the people more to pay for all these bullshit programs. When instead, you should just look at how much money is being squandered. Think about how much money it costs the federal government, i.e., us, i.e., the people, i.e., the taxpayers. Think about how much money it's costing us to keep the fucking national guard at the fucking at the fucking uh, at the Capitol for. Three fucking months. You know how much money it must cost to employ 5,000 people fucking 24 hours a day for six fucking months? It's like, dog, this is complete squandering of your tax dollars. Yet they want to tax you more money for X, Y, and Z program? It's fucking stupid. Yeah. He's like, oh, let's just tax our way. Like, the government mismanages our cash as is, yet we're going to tax our way to more fucking, like, get out of here. Rob Maguli says, do you want to start an old school Italian mob with me? No. Okay. I digress. Una Carmen says, that looks more like tyranny, not protecting climate. Are those globalists going to ride? The fucking questions on Instagram, I can't see the full ones, so I don't know what the rest of that question is, but yeah, it's bad. Have you seen the CGI videos of Joey Basement? No, but I wouldn't be surprised. Do you think Joey Basement is acting like he's old and senile as fuck? No. <laughs> no, I don't think he's acting like it. I think he is old and senile as fuck. You're ageist. That's ageist. Dude, I'm not saying I'm not trying to be ageist. I'm just saying this person is employed by us. Like we are supposedly employing this person, right? And like it's pretty reasonable to be like Yo, why can't this guy speak a sentence clearly? Yo, why can't this guy have a rational thought? Yo, why can't this guy answer a question in real time? Like, what are we talking about? This dude is this dude is not living. This dude is not currently like residing on planet Earth. I'm just saying, like, this dude is toasted. He's a toasted slice of bread, beanbags, and uh, it's extremely concerning. <laughs> Carly says he's employed by Jane. Yeah, he is. He's just like not currently living. He doesn't have any rational thoughts. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's concerning. Barbara on Facebook says, two impeachments alone squandered tons of money from the taxpayers. And it was just an unlimited purse. Yep, that's absolutely right. So it's just like, here we are, here the, here the government is doing what the government does best, which is squander taxpayer money. Yet we think that somehow we think that somehow we need to we need to tax the government we need to tax the people more to pay for more of this bullshit. So counterproductive. It's complete horseshit. <clears throat> Nobody pays attention to how much money is being absolutely squandered. I just got an email from the Epic Times. Illegal border crossings hit more than 101,000 in February. <laughs> Sick. <clears throat> Fed. Fences don't work. They don't work. That why they, that's why they build a fence around the fucking capital because they don't work. Cool. Yeah, I saw this. I saw this other one. Oh, what the fuck is his name? Uh, Eric Swalwell. Look, if you need to know, if you if you if you need to know anything about how corrupt the fucking government is, look no further than Eric Swalwell. This guy's a great A chooch. This guy, like, if there was like a if there was like a magazine of like chooch of the century, Eric Swalwell would fucking would would be on the cover would be the cover story. Cho the Earth's the Earth's largest chooch. Eric Swalwell sues Donald Trump for emotional distress over the January sixth riot. Rep Eric Swal Swal even his name sounds like I'm seems sounds like you're choking on a fucking on a on a on a loose beanbag. Swalwell. Swalwell. It sounds like he has has a beanbag in his throat. Eric Swalwell sued former president Donnie Baseball for emotional distress, seeking financial damages. This dude is suing. 
I hate Earth. Like, literally, literally, the planet of Earth is a garbage fire. Eric Swalwell claimed in a 65-page complaint. 65 pages! That Donnie was responsible for inciting the assault and was negligent in his official duties. Here's the thing. I'm old enough to remember two fucking months ago when Swalwell was caught clapping the cheeks of a fucking foreign agent. And this guy's still on the intelligence committee. This dude is still, he, this guy even gets to go up on the stand and go against Donnie? Like, are you fucking kidding me? This is just, just go to show how corrupt these people are. No one cares. No one pays attention to anything. Yet you're going to have Eric Swalwell be able to, like, what the fuck? It's, it's savagery. Grade A savagery. I, I, 65 page complaint. Look, I remember, I remember a few years ago when I was in high school, if I had to write a 65 page paper, even if it was on the most, even if it was on the most, it, like, oh, dude, I'm going to look up, I'm going to Google this word to make sure I'm using it correctly. Cause I'm stupid. All right. Was the wrong word. All right. If, if, if when I was in high school, if you assigned me to write a 65 page document about something that I loved, 65 pages on, uh, 60, 65 pages on delicious, delicious desserts, whatever. I would be like 65 fucking pages. No, like that's a long paper, 65 pages. Yet this guy managed to submit a 65 page document suggesting that Donnie Ballgame is responsible and he, sh and, the, and that he's due financial damages because of this. What are you doing, bro? He was an impeachment manager prosecuting Donnie Ballgame for the insurrection. He's requesting money damages and a jury trial. What a piece of shit. This guy should go and fuck off. Here, open, open letter to Eric Swalwell. You're a piece of garbage. No offense, but offense. You're a clown. It says in the article. <laughs> it says in the article. Mr. Swalwell came under scrutiny in December 2020 with GOP lawmakers calling for him to be removed from the House Intelligence Committee following a news report that he had a friendly relationship with a Chinese spy. <laughs> he denied any wrongdoing. My fucking ass. This guy's a clown. Uh, this guy's a garbage merchant. And like the fact that this person even is on any intelligence committee is, is a, a real, <laughs> somebody on Facebook called him Fartwell. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Fartwell. <laughs> the Facebook comments are lit. They're like, do you remember his fart? <laughs> Who doesn't? Oh my God, that's so funny. Um, yeah, so anyways. Um, so again, let us just not forget that these people are completely full of shit. Totally full of shit. We know they're full of shit. We know they're liars. We know they're deceptive. We know that every single thing that they say is fucking trash. What is the lifeblood that gives these people power and authority? Money. Where does that money come from? Taxation. Who wants to tax you more? The left. Who wants to tax your fucking capital gains? The left. Who wants to tax you on fucking every possible thing imaginable? The left. Who wants to fucking, who wants, who's like, who like Elizabeth Warren wants to tax, wants to tax wealth, which is tax on taxed, already taxed money that's been taxed every, every tax, the fucking left. It's like, all they want to do is tax the fucking hell out of you. People are paying an ungodly amount of taxes as it sits right now. And anybody that thinks that taxation and taxing the rich or taxing the poor or quite frankly taxing anybody to get us out of this mess is insane. It's like, it's like, talk about, talk about paying the people, talk about paying the people that started the fire to put out the fire. It's like, you're out of your mind. I just wish that, I just wish the people understood that centralized power in the hands of the government is not going to help anybody. Giving more power to them in the form of tax dollars is not going to help anybody. Giving them the ability to enact decrees over how a business should act or what type of gender somebody should be on the board of directors is fucking horseshit. All it's going to do is make, make states like California 
less competitive and ultimately make the United States less competitive in the global in the global arena. It's going to make it so that your average your average business in America cannot compete with a business in another country of the same caliber because because we have all these woke ass rules that allow people to uh, that allow people to just fuck up the normal flow of business and how the free market is supposed to work. People forget that the United States is competing with other countries. They forget that we have to compete with the world at large and that our position at number one is not is not a guarantee. It's not a lock. Yet here we are printing money into oblivion, inflating our currency into oblivion, making everybody out to be a victim, demonizing one group against another group, compartmentalizing people based on race or gender or sexual orientation, and just separating all these people into different factions and making people fight with each other, creating this, this, this unnecessary infighting that ultimately separates all of us from that should matter, which is love of country, support of country, Supported freedom, liberty, liberty and justice for all. Free market capitalism. Find me a find me a system that's better than that. It's like you can't. And then like people like <coughs> people like AOC are so mad at like they're so mad at the corporations when the corporations are following the government's rules. It's like AOC's mad at the government. She's mad at the corporations that are following the government's rules. So she's mad at the corporations. But she's not mad at the government, the one that set those rules that allow them to do those things in the first place. And then she wants the government to get more power over the businesses that she's mad at when she should be mad at the government. She wants the government to then have more power to bring more, to squeeze more out of the businesses, which just lowers the quality of the business, gives more power to the government that fucked it up in the first place, and then everybody loses. The only person that loses is the person at the bottom. It's like... It's complete backwards logic. Lack of depth of understanding. The world is trash. Everything is garbage. The world's on fire. Nobody understands anything. Nobody takes time to do research. Depth of understanding is trash. Wokeness rules all. The world is garbage. So, whatever. When in Rome. <laughs> we get people getting aggressive in the comments on the gram. So, you have this extremely poorly run business that is the federal government. They can't manage money at all. They can't manage anything. They do a really terrible job at managing finances up and down, left and right, yet we're supposed to tax more people and give and give them more power. It doesn't make any sense. Anywho. I'm uh I'm losing gas. Cause this is low energy this is low energy Sasalado. This is low energy low energy low energy Jeb. So <clears throat> I'm going to retire. Uh, thank you to all the people on Instagram that bought badges. I appreciate that so much. Thank you very much for that. I will be back with a video tomorrow. Um, I want to thank, uh, let's see, I got a Cash App donation. Thanks to Marie on Cash App for the donation on Cash App. I really appreciate that so much. Thank you kindly. Thanks to all the people on Facebook. Thanks to all the people on, uh, on the gram. Uh, Zimpity Zimp, Laura Nashley, Heather Jean, Miss Jade, Sheree Dunnigan, SM of 16, I Wenster, Chi Chi 8, The Megan Hayward, and A Mark Life. Thank you so much for buying the badges on, on Instagram. I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Um, if you haven't, if you do not already follow me on Facebook, please go follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Bobby Sausalito. If you don't know about the Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash We Take Naps, go join the Facebook group, contribute there, chat with some folks. That would be good. If you're on Facebook, you don't follow me on Instagram, go follow me on Instagram at Take Naps. And if you don't follow me on YouTube, please go follow me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Bobby Sauce Lito. I really appreciate it. Everybody that has not been to the Bobby Sauce merchandise store, go to bobbysauce.com and grab some merch. If you didn't see me on the Real AF podcast last week, go watch the Real AF podcast. Go on YouTube, go on the YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast, just gal and just type in Real AF. Um, and, uh, I appreciate it very, very much. And thank you guys so much for being here on the gram. I appreciate it. Thanks for the patience. If you have not watched the videos that I've been putting out this last couple of days, they were pretty hot fire. The one I posted on Sunday was a really good one. I really liked that a lot. Um, so 
Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. BobbySauce.com. Thanks to everybody on both of these platforms. I appreciate y'all. Peace out, Facebook. Thanks for being here.